Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Traits Baby Rita Prickly Pear Instructional Video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint the Baby Rita Prickly Pear by using Nature Sketch Traits step-by-step -step painting instructions. You can help this tiny business by shopping for lesson crates at naturesketchcrate.com, clicking that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. First, collect all the materials you need, make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, and don't get too caught up if you think you might have made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. So first go ahead and tape your transfer image to the back of the watercolor paper. And make sure you don't cover up any of the lines you plan to transfer. So if you plan to transfer these hole punch lines, you may want to put the tape on the side instead. Let's go ahead and take your graphite transfer paper, dark side down, light side up, and place it on top of your watercolor paper underneath your transfer image. and then lightly press that flat. Go ahead and take your pencil and pick any spot and draw right over the line, tracing right over it. And then check it to see if that line was transferring. And then you'll make sure you have your paper, your transfer paper dark side down and that you're pressing hard enough to make that transfer. So you want about a medium pressure and you want to be able to see these lines at the end so you can redraw them with your Micron pens. So you don't want it to be too light. Um, if it's too dark, you can always lighten it a little bit. So go ahead and draw right over these, tracing over all the lines to transfer them. And if you like, if it's easier to follow, you can use a colored fine tipped pen or a colored pencil with the sharp tip. And then you'll be able to see which lines you've transferred a little bit better. And this is meant to be relaxing and meditative. So put on a podcast or an audio book, or maybe just listen to nature outside, whatever is relaxing for you. And Go ahead and transfer all the lines just by tracing over them. And don't worry too much if you don't get it exact. And this is just a sketch. It's going to be perfectly imperfect. It's easy to get lost among all of these stamen. And you don't need it to be exact, but it's helpful to have as many as you can transferred. So I use my finger to help me keep track of where I've already transferred and where I need to go. When you think you have all the lines transferred, go ahead and hold your image down one side, little corner, just gently, and flip the image transfer paper up and down like a flip book, and start your eye on one side and move to the other as you flip to see if you've missed any lines. I always end up missing something.
If you end up missing some lines in this step, it's okay. You can always add them in later or leave them out altogether. If you like, you can transfer the common name and the scientific name. The common name is a little bit bigger than my pencil tip, so I always outline the inside of the black area. So it right over it, creating an outline of that text. And then I'll just transfer the scientific name right drawing right over it. And it doesn't need to be exact. Again, this is just a sketch. There's no part of this that needs to be perfect. It's going to be imperfectly perfect. When you're all done, go ahead and remove the graphite transfer paper and you can use this again over and over and remove the tape in the back of the watercolor paper. Oh, came off the transfer paper first because I had less of it on there. You can save the tape to reuse if it's clean like this. So I'll save this for later use. And then you can also save your transfer image to protect your painting while you're creating it. Go ahead and set that to the side because I probably won't really be using it. Take your kneaded eraser and just dab it over some of those lines to lighten them if you need to, or rub it over areas in order to erase any smudges left behind from the graphite transfer paper. You don't want to use this eraser on this paper in areas where you plan to add some paint. The paper will get too roughed up from this eraser and the paint won't behave the way you want it. It's important that this paper stays smooth so that you can get the effect that it's intended to give when working with the watercolor. And now I'm ready to move on to step two. Step two, paint in the Rita orange, green, and yellow. First, mix the Rita orange by taking two drops of the 25H Hansa yellow medium. Make sure to shake these paints up before adding them to your palette. Sometimes the paint pigment settles on the side and you wanna use the full concentration of that color when painting. One, two. and one drop of the Brilliant Cadmium Red. One. And add a little bit of water to your palette with your paintbrush. And you can do that with your water brush by just squeezing on the barrel of the brush. And you can do that with your regular paintbrush if that's what you're using by just dipping it in your water cup and then mixing the paint. Dab it off on your towel. Test the color out to see if it's the right color. Looks good. I'm gonna dab it on my towel a little bit more and take it to the side and add some water to it. And it's gonna be a wet light color because there's a lot of water added to it. More water than paint pigment. So it'll appear light on our page when we paint with it. And dab it off on my towel and check it out. That looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna pick it up with my paintbrush again, just moving it around in there. Dab it on my towel so I don't have too much water being applied to my paper itself. I don't want my paper to buckle because it has too much water. And I'm just gonna start anywhere I like in the, all these petals and start adding it in. And you can take it maybe one petal at a time. It's each space here. Or you can just go through the whole space, adding it in. 
and do the whole entire, all of the petals on the outside as one big space. I think I'd recommend just painting in each individual one but you do whatever's easiest for you. And you're just gonna add this like you would with a marker or a pen, just kind of moving that paint until it starts to get really light. So I'm gonna stop here, so it's starting to get a lot lighter. And I smoothed that paint out a little bit, but obviously I've missed some spaces and it's not super consistent. That's totally fine because it's just a sketch. All those inconsistencies are gonna add a little bit of character and make it a little bit imperfectly perfect. So I picked up some more paint and do this whenever you need to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start again, just filling in the space, starting one side and pulling that paint to the other. Just filling it in, kind of like I would with a marker. You just have to add more and kind of move the paint, the color around. adding it to all of these petals and I have I think I have enough paint pigment in my brush so I'm not gonna add more to it just gonna add it in there move it around a little bit to fill in some of those spaces I missed but again I'm not worried about these inconsistencies that might appear because I think it adds a nice fun character making it imperfectly perfect and unique every time I paint I'm gonna clean off my brush Make sure all of that orange is out of there because I'm going to mix the Rita green. And make sure to reload your water brush with water whenever you need it. I'm going to take three drops of the Hansa Yellow Medium. Three. Two drops of 24H Burnt Umber. One, two. And one drop of the 35H Blue Aqua. Add a little water to that again with my water brush, mixing it up. Once it's mixed, I'm going to dab my paintbrush on my towel and then check it out on my test strip. Looks like the right color. I'm going to use the lightest version of this color so it's going to have more water added to it, making it really wet in my palette. So I'm going to dab a lot of that paint pigment off on my towel and then add it to my palette. And then dab it off on my towel in a different spot. If you need to, you can move your towel, give you a clean spot. While that spot is still wet, it could still pick up more pigment as you've seen in previous lessons, creating that same mistake. And it's fine because this is an exercise that's welcome to mistakes and learning. It's important for us to make mistakes so we can learn. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in the area on the pad, avoiding these little circle areas and the spines. And these are the aerials. And they're the space where the spines originate. And I'm going to start just painting in. And if you like, you can kind of outline that area with your brush around the spines and around the circle aerials. And if you end up having some paint in those, it's fine. This, again, is just a sketch. If you need a finer tip, you can always just roll your tip on your towel. And 
Just taking that paint from one side to the other, like I would with a marker. It's a little bit more fluid. I'm gonna clean off my brush. Still have enough water, I'll probably add some more water before step three. And then I'm going to make sure that all that green's out of there. It looks like it says a little bit more. Then I'm going to go ahead and mix the Rita Yellow, which is just the Hansa Yellow Medium. And just gonna add some of that there. I'm gonna use the full concentration of this color, but I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it so it moves better on our paper. If you don't add water to it, the pigment might be a little bit too much and then it will feel like you're getting caught on the paper and it's not moving correctly. It should feel easy and fluid um, and you should be able to control it so it's not too um, too much water. If you have a lot of water, it just kind of goes wherever, you, wherever it wants to go, which is also fun, but not what we're looking for here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this color to the center of the flower here. And I'm not going to be too worried about getting all of these exact. Just want to get all the stamen in an approximate way. Um, and leave some of the areas blank so we can fill that in with other colors later. But for the most part, it's gonna be just filled with the stamen, whether you see the color or not, the yellow color. And of course I'm filling in the pistol as well, which has the ovary here. And the stigma. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off my brush, let this dry, and move on to step three. Step three paint in Rita Red and Blue Green. So, first mix the Rita Red, taking one drop of the Hansa Yellow Medium. and five drops of the Brilliant Cadmium Red. Five. And one drop of the Quinacridone Violet. onto my towel and test it out on my paper. Looks like the right color to me. And I'm going to use the lightest version of this color, so the most water added to it in my palette. So I'm going to go ahead and dab a bunch of that paint off on my towel and then add water to it in my palette, creating a light color. And I didn't test the light rated green, but I'm going to test this one to make sure it's the right color. This looks a little dark, so I'm going to take my paintbrush to the side and add even more water to it. Maybe take a little bit of this pigment to it. It's a little light in my palette. It looks much better. Dab it off on my towel and test it out. It's a little bit too light now. Add those two together a little bit. A little pink pigment will bleed in there, but not a lot. So I'm just going to mix those together. Maybe those, the amount of water there in that pigment is right. Color mixing can be difficult, but don't overthink it. This is just a sketch. I think that looks good now. It's a nice 
color in between that super light one and really dark one and that medium color. I'm going to go ahead and add this to the petals like you see in step three's image again. I like to start left to right um, just so that I don't smudge the paint while I'm painting. I'm just going to fill it in just like I did with the Rita Orange. But I'm also going to add it in between some of those uh, stamen as well, like you see in step three's image. And make sure to pick up more paint whenever you need it, dab it off your towel and keep painting. And it doesn't need to be perfect. The inconsistencies make this a little bit more fun. Just adding this around the anthers, kind of over the filaments, a little bit in between the filaments. Just to add some of that petal color to get a little more depth. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my brush. And then I will mix the Rita Blue Green. I'll take three drops of the Hansa Yellow Medium. One, two, three. Two drops of the 24H Burnt Umber. One, dropped a little bit here so I want to make sure I don't get that on my hand. So I'm going to take my towel and just rub that up. And then two drops of the Blue Aqua. It's getting really close to my paint there. I have to be careful not to get it in there otherwise I'll have to remix those colors. So paintbrush is up. So I'm going to pull this color over, but I think I'm going to have to remix it on a different part of my palette. It's getting a lot of that red, so it's going to create a totally different color. That's fine. I'll just do it again. I'm going to move my palette over. And start one more time. So we have three drops of the Hansa Yellow Medium. Two drops of 24 inch burnt umber. One, two. And two drops of the blue aqua. One, two. I'm going to make sure my brush is clean and then add a little water as I mix that. Try to add too many paint colors in one space in it, so it's okay. I'm going to dab this off onto my towel and test it out. That looks like the right color to me. Test it one more time. There's that full concentration color I was wanting to see. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush and dab it off on my towel and then add water to the side, creating that wet, light color, wet in our palette, like when we apply it to our painting. Dab it off on my towel and test it out, see if it's the right color. I need a little bit more concentration, so I just took a little bit of that paint, added it in, test it out again. I still think it needs a little more, so a little bit, add it in. Dab it off, test it out. I think that looks right now. And I'm going to start on the bottom right and let my paint pigment run out of my brush as I paint onto this pad of the prickly pear. Again, avoiding these circle aerials. So starting on one side, I still have a lot of paint on this brush, so I may end up needing to dab it on my towel. 
So I'm just kind of doing it one side up and down, letting that paint kind of run out. It's just doing good. It's lightening up pretty fast here. As you can see, it's creating this gradient, very subtle gradient, dark to light from one side to the other. I'm going to lighten it up by just dabbing up my towel and using a little bit of the paint that's on here, making it a little bit more of a exaggerated gradient. So I wanted that to be a bit lighter there. It's still darker there. I'm going to clean my brush off on my towel, let this dry, and move on to step four. Step four, paint in the Rita orange, yellow, and purple. So I went ahead and filled my water brush with a little more water and also grabbed a new piece of test paper to test my colors out on since this piece is pretty much full. And I'm gonna start with painting in the wettest, lightest Rita orange. And I'm gonna paint that to the petals like you see in step four's image. I'm just gonna add it over that a little bit. And a little bit of the red has run into this, but it hasn't really gotten to the orange itself. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that, add it in the corner here to recreate that really light wet color. A little hair on my brush, so I'm gonna be careful it's in the paint here. I'm gonna test that out, see if it's light enough. That looks good. And pick a little more up, dab it off, and I'm just going to add it over the petals. It's just going to brighten them up a bit. And it doesn't have to be exact, just really quickly adding it in. Leave some of those edges or different areas without the paint. That's fine because it adds that inconsistency of the color. variation. Always make sure to dab it off on your towel before applying it. And dab it off on my towel. And I'm going to take the yellow and I create a lighter yellow color by adding some water to it to the side here. Dab it off onto my towel and testing it out. That looks good, just a really light color. Dab it off on my towel and I'm gonna to add that to the spines and the aerials. And if you need a finer tip again, you can just roll your brush on your towel after picking up the paint. I'm just gonna fill that in, kind of using a lined motion. Just the tip of that brush. And pick up more paint whenever you need it, dab it on your towel and then continue painting. clean off my brush and I'm going to use the darker version of the yellow so more paint pigment added to it so it's drier less water it appears darker I'm going to add it to all of the anthers and you don't have to add it to all of them just try to get most of them I'm just going to dab them and I'm not getting exact I'm not worried too much about staying in the lines I'm just adding it in just to brighten them up. And this is a sketch, so just dab them in. Don't worry too much about staying in those lines or getting all of them or being super exact. I'm going to clean off my brush. And then I'm going to mix the Rita purple. I'm going to move my palette carefully so I don't mix the paint up any more than it already is. And I'm going to take three drops of the quinacridone violet.
two drops of the cadmium red. One, two. And one drop of the blue aqua. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that up, adding a little water like we did before. And be careful not to get it in to this part because the green has bled up into this well. So I'm gonna try to keep it on this upper part of my palette, dab it off onto my towel, and test it out. And it looks good, and that's gonna use the lighter color, so I'm gonna dab it off, getting rid of some of that pink pigment from my brush, and then adding it to the side with a bunch of water to lighten it up so it appears light on the page. I'm going to dab it off on my towel to get rid of some of that water, and then I'm going to add it over the pad in this area, and like I see in step four's image, and you don't need to be exact. So you can be creative here, making it a little bit more or a little bit less. This is just a sketch and it varies depending on the plant's condition. So each pad is a little different. So sometimes it has more purple, sometimes it has less purple. This is a really great place and time to be real creative. As you see, I went ahead and added a little bit more than I normally had added for the step-by-step -step lesson. So now I'm going to let this dry and move on to step five. Step five, paint in the Rita Red and Purple. So first you want to paint the Rita Red the dry color, not the super dark, not the super light, but something in between to the petals like you see in step five's image and the final reference image. Uh, so I'm going to take some of this color. This area has been um, compromised by this, but this all is still the same color it was before. So I'm going to pick up some of that carefully onto my brush and just load my brush up with some of that paint. I don't need a whole bunch, I just need a little bit. So I'm going to turn my palette and I'm just going to add it here with some water. I'm going to start with just a little bit of water, being careful there's a little bit of green there, not to add it to that. And conversely, you could just mix a new color. And dab it off on my towel and test it out, see if that's the right color. It's still a little dark, so I'm going to add a little more water to it, being careful not to mix it with my other colors a lot of colors for this painting here, which is fun, but fills up our palette pretty fast. And I'm going to check that again. That looks like the right color, so I'm going to pick up that color, dab it off on my towel, and then just add it to the petals. Um, and I'm just going to refer to step five, my final reference image, just add it in to the similar spaces again like before. It doesn't need to be exact, just add it, same general area. And I'm going to add this like before, like I would with a pen and marker, and just kind of drawing over that space. And pick up more paint whenever you need it, when it runs out. I'm going to clean off my brush and then I'm going to pick up a little bit of this purple color and I don't want it quite this 
dark, maybe a little lighter, so I'm going to add just a little bit of water to it to the side. Test it out on my paper. That looks good. Dab it off, pick up some more, dab it off onto my towel, and then add it in in the same similar areas as my final reference image and my step five image. Again, this is individual to the plant, but you don't want to cover in all of the purple you just painted the first time. Just want to add a little bit. doesn't need to be the same. I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush off on my towel and let this dry and move on to step six. Step six, paint in the Rita brown and red. So first mix the Rita brown by taking one drop of the burnt umber And two drops of the Hansa Yellow Medium. And then mix those up, adding a little bit of water. Dab it off on my towel. Testing it out, looks like the right color. I'm going to use the wettest, lightest version of this color. and. I don't have any paint in this little well here, so I'm going to use that to mix the color, adding water, dabbing off my towel and testing it out. Maybe a little more concentrated. Looks good. Pick up some more, dab it off on my towel, making sure not to add it to dabbing it and anything that's still wet with a lot of pigment and then add it to the aerials as you see in your final reference image in step six's image. So you don't want to cover the entire space just adding a little bit to each one that ends up covering the entire space of that one it's fine. The inconsistency of the color adds more dimension and makes it pop off the page some more. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off my brush. This last color I'm going to add is the red again. This one that's kind of a medium red color. Dab it off on my towel, test it out, make sure it's still that same concentration. Looks good. And we're going to add it to the petals again. I'm going to add it to a larger space covering more of the petals than before. So I'll refer to my final reference image and my step six image for that placement. And if you need to, you can add it in to a space. If you need it to have softer edges, you can after you add it in, dab it off and clean your brush. Take that wet brush over that area to soften those edges a little bit, pulling it into the lighter area. Conversely, you can leave those harder edges in this space. Having some soft and hard edges makes it more interesting to look at as well. And sometimes it'll just create those naturally as the paint pigment runs out of the brush. So I would start with the darker areas from the image, painting that in and then painting into lighter areas and taking it one petal at a time will make it more manageable. And you can always add a little bit more paint to an area to darken it up a little bit while it's wet. It will kind of just bleed into the wet areas and spread out. And if it's too dark, I'm going to dab it off my towel and then keep working with it so it's not so quite so dark. Leave that little edge of 
that orange there. Pick up more pink. Add it in. And again, yours doesn't need to match the reference exactly. This is your sketch, your representation of this and it's going to be unique to you. It's going to be fun and beautiful and imperfectly perfect. I like how that color looks, but I feel like this is a little too dark compared to the lighter purple area. So, I can't really blend it or lighten it at this point, but I can make this a little darker to make it so this is not standing out as much. So I'm gonna pick up that light color, dab it off on my towel, make sure it's still light. Maybe add a little bit more color to it, a little more pigment, kind of get that medium color. Dab it off on my towel and then add it in to those light areas so that it doesn't seem so stark in the difference. So just adding it around the dark one. I'm gonna add a little bit more, just kind of get really light about it. Just take it a little by little. While it's still white, you can even add it in. And make sure you just don't add too much water to it. Just adding some pigment, and moving it around that space so it blends it in. really want that to be too stark of a, a contrast so I didn't want that to be super dark compared to the background and the deepness of this purple does vary depending on the plant's condition so it's still uh, accurate for this plant and I like I just personally like how this looks where it's not super stark should be similar this shouldn't really stand out too much from this and you might notice at one point I had just a little too dark, so I cleaned off my brush and I took my brush and just picked up some of that paint, um, letting it kind of go into my brush, so just moving that around the water around and picking it up with my dryer brush and then dabbing it off and moving it around. So you can control the paint a little bit that way too. And now that I like the way this looks, I'm going to go ahead and let it dry and move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. You wanna make sure this is dry, of course, before you do that. And check that it's dry by just kind of dabbing your finger over it. You don't wanna rub your finger over it while it's wet, so just make sure to dab your finger. You don't wanna smear the paint. So start with the black 005 micron, the smallest tip micron, or the 005 micron, and add it to all of the lines you transferred in step one, except for these filament lines. And you might want to use your transfer image at this time to protect your uh, painting from any kind of smudge marks or um, oils from your hand transferring to that page. So just like when you transferred the lines, this is meant to be a meditative exercise. So put on a podcast or an audio book or just listen to nature and relax. And you can redefine the lines if the paint, like right here, the paint landed outside of the lines. So you can either draw a new line with the paint now being on inside of the line, or you can keep the paint on the outside like on this. I'm gonna paint and leave the paint on the outside there. And it's up to you, so it's a stylistic choice. And refer to your transfer image for placement of those lines again, if you can't see them on here, and your final reference image and there are a few more lines that are a little more rigid than in the transfer image, so you can add those ridges in at this time as well. 
So go ahead and go throughout and redraw those lines. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the scientific name once with this pen. Next, I'm going to use the O1 Black Micron to rewrite the scientific name again to thicken it up and also outline the common name and thicken some lines throughout like you see in 7A and the final reference image. going to thicken some of these anthers, some on the bottom, some on the side, some I'm drawing around the entire circle, and this line variation will help make it look more three-dimensional. Each one of these will get the light a little bit different. have a dark edge in a different spot based on the position of that anther and the size shape. And the light's coming in from the left side so more of that dark will be on the right but they will be not the same for all of them. So give some line variation, seeing how that pops a little bit more off the page once that's done. I'm gonna thicken these spine lines just on the bottom on some of the spines. So kind of where the light's not hitting darker, re-outline the pad as well. So not a lot. You can add more or less depending on what you think you want your image to look like or what do you see in the reference. Last, I'm going to use the O8 Black Micron to add some thicker lines throughout and fill in the common name. And make sure you let it dry before you run your hand over it. It can smudge while it's still wet. So lastly, I'm going to deepen some of these areas in the petals like you see in your final reference image in 7B. And I'm going to use the reader red for that, so I pulled a little bit of this color to the side. The area in this part of my palette was this color originally, and it is not wet, so it's not going to merge with this other color or bleed over there. So I can use this part of my palette now. I'm going to dab it off on my towel and check, see that that's the right color. Maybe a little bit darker. This has dried a bit, 
so it's a little darker and more concentrated than I want. It also wouldn't move very well on my on my painting if I wanted to use it. That looks good. I dab it off on my towel. It's a little bit concentrated, but very close to what I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add it in, like I see in my final reference image. And if I need to, if it's too dark, I can just dab it off and on my towel and then lighten those edges a bit. But that deep contrast, the dark and light colors, will really help this to pop off the page. So it's important to add just a few really dark spots to your painting. And it doesn't have to be exact like before. Paint gets outside of the lines, just adding to that imperfectly perfect style. Got a little purple in there. It's okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush. And I like the way this is, but you can always add more paint or more ink, but don't get too carried away. This is just a sketch. Great job and keep practicing. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun and a chance to relax with creating this painting that's unique to you. If you have any questions or would like to see a plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please leave it in the comments below. Next, you have a few options of what to do with this painting. Punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook. Frame it, gift it, send it in the mail to brighten someone's day. Also make sure to share it on our Facebook fan art page and use the hashtag NatureCreator to feature it on our social media. We'd love to see it. Don't forget to shop for lesson creates at naturesketchcreate.com and also like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you again.